Is it worth buying the new Apple Watch Series 9 or should you just get a Series 8 for up to $230 off instead? And with that, maybe you should get an Apple Watch SE 2 for way less money. Well, today I will explain and show you guys all of the differences and I think some of you guys are gonna be really surprised by my conclusion. Now I've used and purchased a ton of Apple Watches in the past and there's always some nuances that you can't just tell based on spec. So this is the new Series 9 and last year with the Series 8, there were very little differences, but Apple has really impressed us this year. Now the color on this one is midnight, just like with my Series 8, but Apple announced a new pink color this year, which I thought would be really cool for my daughter. That's something you can't get on the Series 8, so that is a nice bonus. And you get a lot of color options with the Series 9, especially compared to the SE, where you have midnight, starlight, and silver. And now that I have them laying down right here, it is hard to tell which one of these is the new Series 9 because they are identical if you look at the sensors, the whole design, and of course the SE. You guys see that it has that vinyl back which is basically plastic. Apple actually wanted to make it cheaper. It also makes it a little bit lighter even if you get the larger size. And we have the smallest size of the SE 2 compared to the 45 millimeter on the Series 8 and 9. So you guys can see that size difference. Now we also have a second generation um, optical sensor here on the SE2 compared to the newer ones that are a little bit faster and more accurate. Now of course with that you have a much smaller price tag and what is really nice is that not only does it start at $249 compared to $400 on the Series 9, but if you want LTE that only costs you $50 instead of $100. And that is great if you're on a budget or if you want to buy an Apple Watch for your kids which is what I have done with this SE2. I got cellular connectivity and they don't even need an iPhone to be able to have texting and for me to be able to track where they're at. So that is very nice. Now with the Series 9, if you want a larger size and you want cellular, well, you're looking at $530. And with that, you can also switch to stainless steel and then your price tag goes way up. And then if you want a nicer band, you're looking at 800 bucks, which is absolutely insane. And the crazy thing is Apple is no longer offering their leather bands anymore. They switched to the new fine woven, which is still crazy expensive, but nowhere near as nice. But thankfully our sponsor Bandwork in Germany makes some of the highest quality genuine leather bands, including their brand new Bandwork X collection with their new performance leather straps with this awesome two-tone design and various finishes like their classy black and brown leather band using premium German Heinen leather renowned for its waterproof qualities. So check it out and order one today by using the link below and the code MAXTECH23 so you can add a one ounce leather cream to your cart for free alongside your premium band from Bandwork. Now I'm going to move the SE2 aside. I'm going to start this comparison with the 8 and the 9 because we have a lot of differences this this year, then we'll touch on the SE2. Now on the outside, these look identical and inside they are almost identical as well, apart from a few chips. Now on the display, one thing you guys might notice right now is that the Series 9 looks brighter. Now we are indoors, but if we were outdoors, you would see a big difference because the Series 9 can go up to 2000 nits, which is what the Ultra had last year, compared to 1000, and that makes a big difference in the sunlight. With that, it can get a lot dimmer as well, down to one nit, which is nice in dark environments, so you might not even have to use the theater mode anymore. Now one of the new hardware changes is the new U2 Ultra Wide Band chip, and that will allow you to easily easily find your phone instead of just pinging it and making a sound, it will actually guide you to your phone, which is really, really convenient. It will also give you interactions with your HomePod, like passing through audio. But what I was more excited for is the new S9 SIP. The Apple Watch Series 8 uses the S8, but that chip is basically the same as the Series 7 and Series 6 Apple Watch, where the new S9 is using a five nanometer technology, and that has some huge improvements finally. It has 5.6 billion transistors, and the CPU is up to 60% faster, graphics up to 30% faster. And while most people won't complain about the performance of their Apple watches, what that actually does matters much more. 
Comparing it to the Series 8 Apple Watch and even the SE2, which uses the same chip, dictation is faster and more accurate. And doing Siri requests, it's all on the device now. It doesn't have to go in the cloud. So that is really nice because sometimes you might ask for a stopwatch or something else. My kids use this feature all the time. And the Apple Watch will say, well, it doesn't have a good connection right now or I can't do this right now. All those things can now be done on your Apple Watch no matter where you are at. So that is awesome. But what is even more exciting is the new double tap feature that Apple showed off. Now that doesn't arrive till next month with the software update, but it will allow you to control your Apple Watch by just tapping your fingers. So you can end a call. You could do a lot of different things with this, even if your hands are busy or they're dirty, instead of having to lift it up and use your nose to touch the screen, which I've done a lot of times. So this is gonna be really handy. But personally, what I was most excited about is the battery life improvement. Now Apple quote the same 18 hours and if you go on their website that's what they show you but my son has been using this series 9 and the improvements have been huge he went from a SE, which wouldn't even last all day because he uses cellular and that uses more power to the Series 9, which at the end of the day, it's still close to half of the battery remaining. And that's thanks to the new more efficient S9 chip. Now, a lot of people have been talking about their real world experiences online. One person said he is getting two days out of his Series 9. Another person said they got 14 hours, including a 45 minute workout from their watch. And it was still at 62% battery. And another person said they had 52% at the end of the day. And this is incredible real world differences that Apple does not mention because they just want to quote the same exact battery life. So this matters not only when you're buying a new Apple watch, but two, three, four years later, when the battery started to degrade, your battery will last much longer if you have the Series 9, especially if you use cellular. Because of that, I would say that the Series 9, even though a lot of the other hardware is the same, this is one of the biggest updates that we have had in many years. Now, other than those changes, everything else is practically the same. So what kind of difference do you get if you are looking to buy an SE2 compared to the Series 9? Is it worth the extra cost? Now, the first thing that you'll notice is of course the size difference, but you can get this in a larger size. And with that, the display on the Series 9 is much brighter thanks to that upgrade. The Series 9 also has an always on display, which is now quite bright compared to previous versions. Whereas the SE2 does not have that, so you have to use race to wake. You also have a lot of additional sensors. For example, you have a blood oxygen sensor, which could be really useful, especially for my my son who has allergies and with that you can you do an ECG to check on your heart and you also have a temperature sensor on the series 9 uh, which they use for ovulation tracking and those things can be a big deal for some people now with that even though both of these are LTE and they connect to Wi-Fi having that new chip is gonna give you better connectivity and even though Apple doesn't advertise it what we've noticed in the real world that even for cellular you you will have better reception with the newer models. And that could be helpful. Also downloading and installing apps, setting it up much quicker on the new one. And the internal storage has also been updated. You have 64 gigs on the new Series 9 compared to all the previous Apple Watches for local storage. Now, both of these can be used for sleep tracking, but I would say on the SE2, it's a lot less useful because of the battery life and the charging speed. The Series 9, has fast charging where it can go up to 80% in just 45 minutes. So if you're sleeping with it, you can just put it on your charger when you wake up as you're getting ready and it charges incredibly fast. And even my son has noticed that in the real world. So if you care about using a lot of those sensors for working out and for other things, the Series 9 is much more useful in the real world. Now durability is fairly similar, but the Series 9 has IP6X dust resistance. So that is a little bit improved. And another thing to know about the display, even though Apple unlocked a bunch of Apple Watches with software updates, with the Series 9 and the 8, you actually have an exclusive watch face where it kind of curves around the edge because the whole display actually curves, making your viewing area larger than on the SE, even if you get the larger size model. Now, one super cool exclusive that the SE doesn't get is full keyboard support. So as you guys could see, with the SE, you still have to do the old school one letter at a 
a time or use your voice, whereas with the Series 9, you have a full keyboard where you can actually type, and my kid loves this update. And then if you do choose to use your voice, it's a lot more accurate as well. So with all of that covered, let's answer the original question. Should you buy a Series 9 or should you get a Series 8 or an SE2? Well, this year, my answer is gonna be a lot different than last year. If you're trying to buy an Apple Watch that's a very inexpensive one, you're trying to get into it, last year we recommended the SE2. This year though, I would not. I would go on Amazon and pick up a Series 8 instead because the refurbished prices, even with cellular, pretty much match up with buying a new SE2 with cellular. The prices are crazy and you get most of the updates uh, with the Series 9 on the Series 8, so that is incredible. But if you had an older Apple Watch already, you have a little bit more money to spend, this year, I would say absolutely get the Series 9. The display improvement is nice, the ultra wideband chip is nice, but the most important part is having that new S9 chip, which is the new chip in about four years, and that will give you much better battery life. It's gonna make your Apple Watch last much longer than previously, and that is what really matters. So I would spend the extra money on the S9 if there is any way that you can afford to get one. I think that is the smart choice and that is why I spend $529 for this one instead of buying my son a Series 8 refurbished one because it makes that much of a difference, especially after a couple of years. You guys let me know what you end up buying down below. Check out Bandwork. Their bands are amazing. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next one.